This little computer right here is a Mac Pro 2008, also known as the Mac Pro 3,1. It hasn't been supported by the latest versions of Mac OS for quite some time, but using the magic of OpenCore Legacy Patcher, I can get this to run Mac OS 12 Monterey with not a lot of issues. So let's look at the process it took for me to do this. I've had a Mac Pro 3,1, the 2008, since, well, 2008, and it's been in storage. As you might expect, storing something like this means it collects quite a bit of dust. I gave it a quick once over with compressed air and isopropyl alcohol before transporting it back to Portland from Southern Oregon. For all things considered, this computer is in relatively good shape. This particular Mac Pro 2008 is probably the most common configuration. It is a dual CPU model, that means it has two 2.8 GHz quad core 45 nanometer Intel Xeon processors. That equates to eight physical cores. Because of the over-engineering that went into these machines, such as the 980-watt power supply, six internal drive bays, and four PCIe slots make these things still viable. While it only has 8GB of RAM, it does have a USB 3.0 card and upgraded Wi-Fi chipset. It also has two GPUs, including the GPU it shipped with, the X1900 XT, and an old but still viable G4 7600 GTX. The boot drive is a dirt cheap SATA SSD. These meager specs should be more than enough to run macOS 12 Monterey. First thing I did was plug everything in, and it immediately powered on, which I did not expect. Of course, it did not boot successfully. But we'll get to that in a second. The GPU's power cables were disconnected. Fortunately, I'd stuffed the relevant power cables in the case, so it wasn't a big deal. My Mac Pro 2008 has some quirks after many years. One of them happens to be that I lost the screw that secures down my fan chassis. So pro tip, just don't yank on the fan chassis like I'm doing in this video. That is, unless you've already removed the screw. On the topic of wireless chipsets, I upgraded the airport card in this particular computer to an AC model. This is supported in the latest versions of Mac OS. However, if you'd like to have support for wireless networking, you'll need to upgrade your wireless chipset or provide one that's supported by the latest versions of Mac OS. You can read more about that in the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. I almost forgot, links are in the description of this video. The classic Mac Pros all use the unconventional mini PCIe power cables. They are located next to the airport card. Plugging in the power cables is easy, although tedious. After properly powering the G4 760, it was time to reassemble my Mac Pro 3,1. First by placing back in the fan chassis, and then the CPU covers. I've never been a big fan of these CPU covers, as you can tell, because they're kind of janky. This computer had been sitting about two years, so I wasn't entirely sure if it'd still boot. Fortunately for me, this thing was still bootable and it launched right into macOS High Sierra 10.13. This had been installed using High Sierra Patcher years ago. I have to apologize about the choppy video in this section because I did not realize leaving the X1900 XT installed would cause QuickTime to capture this poorly. This GPU probably qualifies as a graphics decelerator. So the first step I need to do is download OpenCore Legacy Patcher from the OpenCore Legacy Patcher website. It can be found under the OpenCore Legacy Patcher release apps, or at least as of recording this video. I encountered a strange error when I was trying to download OpenCore Legacy Patcher from GitHub. The Assets tab was empty and only displayed a spinning loading icon. My solution was to go over to mozilla.org and download my favorite web browser, Firefox. I'm sure Chrome would work fine too, but this is just my preference. After going through the trouble of downloading and installing Firefox, I was able to go back to the OpenCore Legacy Project's GitHub page and download the OpenCore Patcher GUI app. I recommend downloading whatever is the latest release of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. For me, it was 0.5.3. Once you launch the app, you'll want to build and install OpenCore. As someone who's never used OpenCore Legacy Patcher, I wanted to play it safe and install it on a USB thumb drive. This is the first place I encountered a problem, and it's not OCLP's fault. 
OCLP needs to be installed on a FAT32 formatted drive. For some damn reason, Disk Utility was not letting me format into FAT32. My solution was just to take this to my Mac Pro 2019. And first I had to charge my mouse in the dumbest way possible. With my mouse charged, I was able to quickly format the drive to FAT32, take it out, and stick it back into my Mac Pro 2008. I was then able to use OCLP to install OpenCore onto the SanDisk thumb drive. Installing OpenCore onto the thumb drive doesn't take very long, and then once it's done, it'll ask to reboot. This is where a Mac EFI GPU comes in really handy. Holding down the Option key at boot brings up the boot menu, and I will want to select Open Core. Just a quick tip that'll make your life easier, holding down the Control key when clicking a drive will set it as your default boot drive. If this all works properly, you should see a boot menu that looks very similar to the Mac boot menu. So I'm going to take just a second to explain what's happening here. Here is a boot graphic that's very useful from learn.microsoft.com. When you power the device on, it first goes into the firmware bootloaders. On Mac OS, this is the Apple boot menu when you hold down the Option key or the Apple logo. Mac OS handles EFI a lot differently than Windows. These older Macs do not use UEFI, they use an older variant. The EFI is basically a staging area for firmware updates, and that's about it on these older machines. And then the boot sequence begins. But when we install OpenCore, we are installing middleware that attaches itself to the EFI. So on the left, we have the unmodified macOS boot sequence, and on the right, we have the OpenCore modified boot sequence. This allows OpenCore to do its magic. Before you guys run to the comment section, yes, this is meant to be a simplified version of the macOS boot sequence. So let's get back to installing Monterey on that Mac Pro 2008. The first thing I noticed is the X1900 XT was outputting some mangled video. It looks like some sort of interlacing error, but switching the resolution seemed to fix it. Mind you, this graphics card's so old it only has DVI output, so I was going DVI to HDMI. The next step is to create a USB installer using OpenCore Legacy Patcher. OpenCore Legacy Patcher will give you several options to download which version of macOS you'd like to use with your Mac. This will initiate the download. I selected Monterey because it's more compatible with this computer than Ventura. It's a big download, so let's cut ahead. Once it's done downloading, it'll go through a verification step. At the end of the process, it'll probably require your password too to copy it into your applications folder. The final step is to create a macOS installer. Instead of downloading, we'll select Use an Existing Installer. I'm going to use my same thumb drive as I used before and overwrite its contents with the installer. And it'll take a while for this process to happen. Once it is done, it will ask you if you want to install OpenCore on this USB drive. And yes, I will want to do that. Then select the correct drive and it'll do its thing. When it is done, it will ask you if you want to reboot. This is where I encountered a bit of a problem. My ancient graphics card, the X1900 XT, does not have metal drivers. However, it supports the native Mac EFI boot screen. We need to talk graphics cards for just a second. I'm sorry, so let's see if I can keep this quick. This is a Mac GPU. What I mean by that is it has a special EFI ROM that'll output a boot screen because the classic Mac Pros predate what's known as UEFI. These graphics cards had to have special ROMs that output a boot screen. In macOS 10.14, Apple switched its graphics API to Metal. When they did this, Apple also dropped a lot of older chipset support. Very, very few models of GPUs were made that could support both the Mac EFI boot screen and Metal. And the very few that did were old. This means that very few people with the classic Mac Pro have a boot screen. While OpenCore cannot restore the native boot screen, what it can do is load in almost immediately the low-level drivers needed to output video for the video card. This allows OpenCore to display its own boot picker that functions very similarly to macOS's. In turn, this allows macOS to display video sooner in the boot sequence. I rebooted my computer holding the Option key so I could set my default boot drive again. I control clicked the EFI boot partition. The OpenCore boot picker appeared like it was supposed to, 
So then I picked the Mac OS Monterey installer, and nothing really happened. And this is where I wasted a lot of time, because I assumed the problem was with my open core installer, but it was a lot more simple. That ancient graphics card, well, it's not supported by Metal, which means it's not supported in Monterey. As you may have guessed, all I needed to do was remove that ancient graphics card. From there, the Mac OS installer started behaving normally. And then I ran into my next problem. Let's see if I can explain this quickly. When Monterey installs, it has a multi-part installer and it reboots multiple times. When it would reboot, it would go back to the beginning of the install process. In the boot picker, the only thing I would see is the installer. That's not supposed to be the case. What I needed to do was perform an NVRAM reset. You know, holding down command option PR. I would then see two options, the second being the important one, the incomplete install on the hard drive. Then the install process would continue. However, it would reboot again, and I'd have to do the same thing. This happened roughly four times. Then the computer finally booted to the hello screen. Except for it was really choppy. When I tried to interact with the computer, it hung, and I thought it might have crashed. However, it rebooted on its own, this time the hello screen was completely smooth in its animations, and I was able to finally finish installing macOS Monterey. I played around with my computer for a bit to get some impressions and ran Geekbench 5, which gave me a predictably not very good result. But the Geekbench score has nothing to do with Monterey and everything to do with this being a Mac Pro 2008. To be completely honest with my impressions of Open Core, this thing runs Monterey just as well as it ran High Sierra. This is 100% a completely usable experience, and this isn't even that well of a spec Mac Pro. As an old GPU, only 8 gigs of RAM because the other RAM died, and a cheap SSD. You could do a lot better with this computer. Also, I want to give a special thanks to the Open Core on the Mac Pro Facebook group, especially Freck Ryder, because he let me rubber duck my problems on him on Facebook. Please let me know if there's anything you would like to see me do with this computer in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.